Sniffing Wi-Fi packets on a macOS computer can be a pretty annoying experience, even with third-party tools like Wireshark that give you a whole lot of information. It turns out, though, that macOS has its own set of tools that are pretty useful for sniffing Wi-Fi packets. However, the terminal strings to use them are monstrously long. We'll show you how to shorten these into manageable, shorter commands with aliasing on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Sniffing Wi-Fi packets has a number of different applications. In particular, red teams can use it to quickly and easily identify infrastructure that's connected to a Wi-Fi network they are looking to target, whereas people looking to spy on users of a wireless network can capture packets now and then later on, if they get access to the password, go back and dig for things like user credentials that are floating around in the capture that they've managed to grab. Now, this is a great capability for any hacker to have. However, on macOS, it's buried in some very long terminal commands that are easy to mess up. And in general, it's much more simple to do things like setting an alias, which allows us to use a shorter string to run the longer command that we need in order to capture packets reliably. Now, as a note, it's also not possible to set the channel in Wireshark. So these commands are generally the only way that you can be more specific about the types of channels you're capturing on in a macOS system. Now, to get started, you'll need, of course, a macOS system. So let's begin. To get started using an Apple computer for capturing Wi-Fi packets, we'll need to do a couple things with the built-in tools to target the Wi-Fi network adapter so that we're on the right channel, and also we'll take a look at the onboard system for capturing packets without downloading anything like Wireshark. So to take a look at the first one, we'll look at the tac tac get info command, which comes at the end of a very long uh, pseudo command here. So when we press enter, we should see the information for the network that we're currently connected to. Here we can see information like the encryption that that uh, wireless network is using, the name of the network, and then the channel that it's on. We can confirm that we're on that channel by looking at Wireshark and seeing that we're currently capturing on that channel. I'll go ahead and stop Wireshark, and in the next command, we'll go ahead and run something to find the actual ESSIDs, channels, and other information about nearby wireless networks. Now, this command uh, looks similar to the last one, but at the end, we'll have attack S, and it will return, uh, if we don't do everything after it, a list of all the nearby wireless networks with the information. Now, we don't want to have to blur all that out, so instead, we'll use uh, this pipe command and then grep control which is the name of our test network that we're using for this demonstration. When we enter the command, after a brief pause, we should see a list of information about the nearby networks. Here we see the ESSID, the MAC address, and then the channel that the network is operating on. So next up, we might want to capture on a channel that we are not currently on. And rather than looking around and trying to find a network we can access that's on that channel so the computer will just shift over to it, it's a lot easier to just tell it directly what we want it to do. So here we can see the command for actually changing the channel to another channel. And I will point out that for aliasing, the way this is laid out is very annoying because if you don't, uh, if you don't keep this all as one string and you try to put a space between the equals and the for here for the uh, after tac tac channel, uh, it will not work. So in general, you will need to create your own alias for each channel, but because there's only 13 of them, it's really not that much work since you can just kind of copy and paste. Now here, we'll try to change our channel to number four. And if we don't see an output, it could be because we need to turn the wireless card off and then back on again in order to get it to disconnect from the current network we're on and switch into the channel that we are telling it to. So let's give it a try. So let's start up Wireshark and see if we can get confirmation that we're capturing on a different channel. Now, as you can see, we've switched to channel four and the incoming beacons are now all from uh, various networks that are operating on that one individual channel. Now, as you can see, it does take a couple attempts sometimes to get this to work, but by switching off the wireless card and turning it back on, we will be able to get the card to do what we want it to do. 
Now, finally, there is the onboard airport D sniffing option, which allows us to select the wireless card we want to sniff on and then simply type sniff. So I'm gonna stop Wireshark and then demonstrate how this works by simply pressing return, entering my password, and then you can see that we're actively capturing frames on EN0, which is set to channel four. Now, once we're done, we can press Control-C, and we can see that there's now an automatically generated uh, .cap file that has all the various packets we've been able to capture on that interface in the time frame we've been uh, allowing it to run. So all of these are super useful, however, they are not easy to type always. So there is a shortcut to getting this to work a little bit more quickly on a macOS computer I would like to share so that you can do this too. So if you type sudo open dot bash underscore profile, it will open a new window which has all the various aliases that you've assigned. Now if you want to add your own, you can just type alias space and then the name that you want to assign to that alias, in this case sigint, and then uh, equals and then a single parenthesis for the actual string that you want to pass. Now, anything that's enclosed in the single uh, parenthesis set here will be executed in the terminal instead of what you write here. So if I type sigint, it will actually execute the sniffing command on the EN0 network interface. So that means I don't really need to remember all these very specific commands. I can create shortcuts for myself so that it's much easier to do so. So if I want to try instead set channel to nine, and then run sigint. I'm now capturing on channel nine with only two commands in OSX and a lot shorter than running this big long version of the same thing. So by shortening this, we can quickly set up an OSX computer we have limited access to to be able to capture wireless packets without needing to remember these big, long, complicated commands. Instead, we can use the shorter to effectively do so whenever we have the opportunity or whenever the situation arises. Now, if you only have access to an Apple computer on a temporary basis, or if you don't have the ability to download new apps like Wireshark, you can use these built-in tools to quickly and easily capture wireless packets in your area, save them to a capture file, and then load them onto a computer equipped with Wireshark in order to analyze them later. This means if you have access to an Apple computer, you can use it as a wireless capturing node and simply decode it on a computer that has the right equipment. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.